When the court officers brought the apostles in and made them stand before the council of elders, the high priest questioned them. We gave you orders not to mention that Jesus name, but you fill the crowds with your teaching. Peter did not deny their accusation and boldly accused them of being complicit in the death of Jesus. They became infuriated and wanted to put the apostles to death. As I read this account, I, a question that used to circulate in some circles came to mind. Oh, it's an old question. If you were charged with being Christian, would you be convicted? Would there be enough evidence to convict you? It's a great question to ask ourselves, especially coming as it does during this Easter season, when we have been immersed in stories about the passion, death, and resurrection, stories about the empty tomb, the encounters Jesus had with his disciples, meeting with them in the upper room, eating with them at the seashore, enjoying that fish, and the accounts of the early Christian communities about their caring for one another. Today, Peter offers us some advice about how to strengthen our relationship with Jesus so that, yes, there will be enough to convict us. But first, let's be clear about the word convict. If convicted for a criminal offense, a person is said to be guilty. However, if convicted in a biblical sense, the individual, with the help of the Holy Spirit, begins to see himself as God sees him. He may experience guilt, however, when convicted, the guilt is acknowledged, but hope emerges along with a profound awareness that Jesus Christ has taken over our lives. The Lord has pushed back the stone that entombed us with fear, insecurity, worry, self-absorption, and yes, filled us with peace be with you. Peter put it simply, we must obey God rather than men. <coughs> we must listen to the voice of God and block out the other voices that, cry, that crowd Christ out of our thoughts and actions. How is this possible? Well, there's enough evidence throughout the centuries of people who have done this and are still doing it. Among them, Peter Chanel and Louis Grignon de Montfort, whose lives we celebrate today. Who are, who are these people? Peter Chanel, 1841, a French Marist missionary on the Pacific Islands of Wallace and Futuma, Futuna, where he was martyred he destroyed the cult of evil spirits. He became the patron of Oceania. Louis Mary de Montfort, 1716, from Brittany. He studied at St. Sulpice. He was a hospital chaplain, founder of the Congregation of the Daughters of Wisdom, apostolic missionary whose preaching led to a spiritual revival in his native Brittany. He established numerous confraternities for the rest for the recitation of the rosary, founded the missionaries of the Company of Mary, and today they number about 850, and his chief work, true devotion to the Blessed Virgin. They were convicted, and to be convicted demands some decision. It sometimes comes with a price, but not always. For a Lutheran pastor, pastor however, it did come with a price. He penned a book that spoke of the cost of discipleship in which he said, salvation is not cheap grace. And he defined cheap as forgiveness without repentance, baptism without discipline, grace without the cross. We heard St. John tell us today that God does not ration his gift of the spirit. He told us seek to obey Listen to the Son. The Father loves him and has given everything over to him. 